Good morning and welcome once again to another one of our devotions. It is indeed a pleasure to be with you this morning as we look forward to this new day. As we prepare ourselves for our devotions this morning, I ask your prayers for the families of Owen Williams, formerly of the Bible Society, who will be laid to rest at St. Barnabas Church Yard today, and also for a dear friend and fellow sojourner in the faith. Julian Robinson who passed on to higher glory over the weekend. We just reminded that in the midst of life we are in death. It is a part of our journey. In a sense we all die daily as we face the various challenges of life and so we give thanks to God this day for his servants praying that as they return from whence they have come that they may receive the Father's blessing and the Father's peace please remember them in our time together this morning All the earth bows down before you. Bless our God, you peoples. Gracious and loving God, we salute you this day in thanksgiving for the rest of the past night. 
we ask that during this day we would be mindful of your continued presence and love in things we do not understand help us to be patient and wait on your guidance Help us to trust that the journey on which you have placed us is indeed not only for our benefit, but that of those around us. May we greet each opportunity with the knowing that you are in everything and everything is in you. We ask this through Jesus, whom we call the Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you've built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Word of God, written in the book of the Gospel according to Matthew, the 21st chapter, reading from verse 33. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. And it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the reading. They wanted to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because they believed that he was a prophet. Very interesting words there from our Lord this morning as we are reminded of his continuous effort to bring persons into a new relationship with God, helping them to see life from a different place, helping them to understand the importance of 
being attentive, attentive to all that has gone on in their lives, all that is part of who they are. Having them to be attentive to the words that they hear and recognizing the importance of allowing those words to penetrate, to go within, to give us that sense of peace and to help us to understand the importance of being with God and allowing that relationship to grow and to develop. The parable of the tenants and their response to the slaves and servants and even to the son is but yet another reminder for us in our journey in God to remember whose we are. To never find ourselves in such a position that we are lost in the separation. That we are lost in the thinking that we are our own. That we answer to no one. When we look at ourselves in the mirror, we see nothing else with us. We see no connection with us. We, we realize that we are, we are here. We are a separate entity. And that sense of being a separate entity causes us to feel that we are free. And yes, we are free, but that freedom is a freedom within the context. The folks that worked the vineyard were free. They were free to, to do with it as they pleased. They were free to, you know, cultivate here or cultivate there. They were free. But it was not their vineyard. They had a responsibility to the one who had leased it to them. And the same is true of ourselves in our journey and I'm especially mindful of this today as I as I reflect on the lives of my friends that have passed on in these recent days and young Owen who will be laid to rest this evening as we find ourselves coming to the end of our days we must take some time and realize that there was a reason we were here and have we lived up to that reason have we discovered that reason there was a reason these men were given a vineyard it was so that it might profit the landowner that he would be able to receive at the appointed time the fruits of the vineyard there would have been enough for them, but there would also have been some for him. We've been given a life that is ours to live, <clears throat> and we can live it as we choose. We can live it to the fullest. But there's an aspect of this life that we have that is for God. And at the appointed time, there is the harvest. And at that harvest, it is expected that we would have we would have served God, we would have been able to give to God that which is expected, the fruits of our being here, the fruit of having this experience of being in this world, being able to look around us at nature and see the beauty of nature, the power of the water, for example, as we see in this video. the beauty. Just look at that water. Just look at those waves. Each doing that which it was ordained to do. Endlessly, perfectly. It's 
no such thing as an imperfect wave. It may not be the wave we want because of what we are want to what we want to do. Especially if we are a surfer. But at the same time, each word, each wave is unique and each wave is perfect. And each wave comes to the shore in one form or another. We are as waves. <clears throat> But unlike waves and like the tenants, we also have free will. So the waves are able to do what, that which the Creator has intended for them to do. But the human person has an added advantage. But in addition to what we are created for, that we have the free will to explore the more and to do it differently but yet still having in mind the importance of the purpose of our existence today as we go into our world as we go to our jobs those of us who are able to do so I want you to remember this parable of the tenants. Remember, yes, this is a beautiful life. Yes, we have been given the free will to do everything and anything we want to do with it. But also remember that it is a life in God. And though we may not see that physically, it doesn't mean that it's not reality. So as you live this day and in the days to come, live with that awareness. Live with that wonderful awareness that you are in God and God is in you. And there is an expectation from the Father. There is an expectation. That one, we will return, and that as we return, we will bring the fruits of our labors. Because, as it is said, to whom much is given, much is expected. Can there be a greater gift than life? Stop and imagine it for a minute. Just pause and imagine, even as you just simply watch this video of the ocean, this, is there a greater gift that you can imagine than to experience this life that we have? Is there a greater gift? And how am I using this gift then? Am I using it in a destructive manner? Am I using it to build up or to break down? Remember, it's my gift. It's not about anyone else. While others are important, it is still my gift. And it is what do I do with my gift? How am I using my gift for the purpose of the Father? That's the main question that we have to answer. We give God thanks for those who have journeyed with us through the years. We give thanks for the wisdom they've shared, the love, the various experiences, the examples, the lessons. And as we give thanks, we are reminded of our own journey, our own example, 
for others the lessons that we are here to offer others the contribution that we will make to this world so that we leave this world better than we might have found it that we remember whose we are that we remember that the harvest comes and the one who has given us this tremendous gift expects to be given the produce of our time here. All this is important and all this we must remember. So dear friends, today as we move out from this place now and we go into our world, I invite you to pause during the course of the day and remember the tenants in the vineyard. The vineyard is your life. You are the tenant. How do you respond to the owner's request for that which is only his? Are you willing to offer gladly to him the fruits that he expects that which you would have agreed to in acquiring possession of your life are you willing and ready to give to God that which is God's that you may continue in the service to enjoy the gift and to work even more intently to produce even more. The more that we are able to produce the more we have and the more we can offer our God. May this day be one of those days that helps us to find more purpose in our world, in our lives. And in finding that purpose to be able to really and truly Remember that it is in God that we live and move and have our being. It is by His gracious will that we are who we are. May this day then be yet another day of our giving thanks to God and remembering how wonderful, how beautiful it is to be here. May you be blessed as you continue to nurture the vineyard that you have received.